the men's team event won the silver medal which was historic uh, for the country uh, that was the first silver medal for the men's team events and i was i was gladly a part of it for example if you are world number 1 in one event and you don't play with that partner anymore your rankings go to waste it's zero again you have to start from scratch the goal i want to achieve next would be to qualify for the olympics and give my best Welcome to the Garam Avtar show. In today's episode I have with me Rohan Kapoor, the international badminton player from India who currently holds the 32nd position in the world rankings. Standing at 6 feet tall, he initiated his badminton journey at the age of 7 and received training at the Pulela Gopichand Badminton Academy in Hyderabad. His national achievements include winning the All India Senior Ranking Badminton Tournament in Chennai in 2021. and securing the runner up position at the 83rd senior national badminton championship in 2019 on the international stage rohan has earned accolades such as silver medal in the men's team event at the international asian games in 2023 and a gold medal at the victor denmark master 2023 in the mixed doubles category notable performances also include victories in the india chatisgarh international challenge and the lee ning maldives international challenge rohan kapoor has consistently demonstrated his badminton prowess in both mixed doubles and men's doubles leaving a lasting impact on the global badminton scene thanks for joining me rohan such a pleasure to have you on my show thank you thank you so much for having me thank you so much <laughs> So please tell us about your sporting journey and uh, any challenges that you faced. Uh it it started pretty early for me actually because uh, uh, dad uh, still plays and back then uh, he was the one who used to play and me and my elder brother just used to follow follow him and uh, go uh, go with him to the stadiums uh, in the evenings and you know just uh, hang around there and try to get a chance to play. That's how it started. Right. and uh, as my dad still plays and my elder brother used to play back in the day uh, i got the motivation from them to start uh, playing badminton uh, never thought of it to put it as a career back then but uh, eventually it became one and uh, now it's everything for me so that's how it started uh, i mean yeah <laughs> okay any challenges that you faced in your career or something uh, definitely uh, as a mixed doubles player i started uh, playing singles as as any uh, badminton player starts with a singles uh, career in badminton but uh, gopi sir shifted me to uh, men's doubles in the initial years of joining the academy but then uh, a malaysian coach uh, had uh, joined the national national team uh, so he figured that uh, i think it's better to uh, shift me to mixed doubles and mixed doubles only and focus on one event Uh, so it's always been difficult uh, to you know uh, pursue a pursue a career where you have two people involved yeah. because there are a lot of challenges uh, in terms of partnership you need to be on the same level as your partner be it men's doubles or mixed doubles or or women's doubles as well any any paired event is a difficult event to start off with uh, so i've been uh, i've been uh, you know i have i've had a tough time uh, uh, throughout the career Uh, with uh, different partners uh, you know you play with a partner for a for a while and then if things don't work out either you or your partner or the coaches think that you know you need to start off with a new partner so when that happens you need to start off your rankings from zero mm. so for example if you are world number 1 in one event and you don't play with that partner anymore your rankings go to waste it's zero again you have to start from scratch yeah. so that's a that's a that's a bit disappointing but uh, i think i've i've been through that quite many times now but uh, and i'm and i'm okay with it i've made my peace with it <laughs> so i'm uh, always motivated to start off again uh, with a fresh partner and you know do better and better awesome awesome so uh, you want to tell us anything about uh, the best learning that you've had from your sporting journey overall i think uh, discipline uh, wise i think i would really uh, you know give a big big uh, thanks to the sport i've been you know related to because uh, i don't think if i would not be playing badminton i would be the kind of person i am today i have a set routine for things um, i am punctual i feel and uh, you know just basic dis- i mean if i see people uh, of my age uh, 
who are non sports persons i i can totally make out a lot of differences between us i mean i wouldn't want to give any examples to put out but in general i mean who who, who whoever is a sports person would relate to that with me on that so i think that's just the basic of it uh, you know sports gives you so much learnings uh, respect for your seniors for your elders for your coaches for your for your colleagues and i think there is a big big list but yeah let's start off with that <laughs> yeah for sure 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 okay uh, so please tell us some of your good habits that you follow during a training day and a non training day uh i i, I wouldn't say that i am the uh, most most disciplined boy but yeah i have learned i have learned things the hard way as well uh initial years of my senior career in into badminton i was not very very punctual about my diet about my eating habits uh as i was a bit young also i think the body was able to manage that uh, junk i was eating with the amount of training i was doing but as i am you know growing older and older every day i think i have learned that i need to eat eat good food uh, get proper rest and uh, of, of course give my 100% in training so that i have learned the hard way and i feel that uh the youngsters who are coming up needs to uh, you know pick that up really quickly and understand that it's really important to you know maintain these things at a young age to you know do better and better i feel i feel if i would have done a few things here and there you know a lot of a lot could have been changed awesome so has it as a uh, has it ever happened that at some point you thought of quitting your sport or you had very negative thoughts because you know uh, Of, of some injury or poor performance or rigorous training schedule so how did you tackle that feeling i never i never felt of quitting because of rigorous training or uh, poor performances uh, i feel I, that way i was mentally very very strong uh, irrespective of the losses i've had be it the first round of a, a smaller tournament or a or a final of a bigger tournament uh i never felt to quit but covid if you speak about was a really really tough time for me mm. uh cuz you know things were at a at a stop and uh, at the same time i was having uh, partnership issues as well i didn't have a partner and covid hit so i think wo ek ke sath ek do problems ek sath aa gayi which wow. which was like which was really a uh, surprise for me and uh, uh but but i was really grateful uh, to my parents uh, because they never stopped supporting me Uh, especially my dad he he really supports me a lot and he uh, i think he is the one who motivates me to uh, you know keep going okay uh, because because two years i think 2020 since since like the beginning february march till the ending of 2020 was like a big 6 7 month gap where you know uh, i was at home i was in delhi uh, the academy in hyderabad was on and off uh gopisa was not calling a lot of players back because he he was he wasn't sure what's the condition if if you if you know somebody is infected and he doesn't want people to come in and infect the others as well so he was also being cautious i was being desperate to call back to the national camp and start training again uh you know because i i i knew that i am getting older i am not i don't have a partner currently so i don't i can't miss this opportunity but it was a tough time i was i was going through a lot of lows back then i i thought of considering uh, to consult with a psychologist also but i think uh, uh, speaking with dad uh, helped me get get through that okay. and uh, uh, one day just i spoke to gopi sir and i i expressed my feelings that what i've been going through and uh, you know he was really kind to call me back immediately and uh, start training so i think that was one time where i thought you know if if now sir doesn't call me back or uh, if you know i'll wait for a few more weeks or months and if things don't you know start getting together i think i'll 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 figure something else maybe in badminton but i'll figure something else right if, right. if not playing i i think i didn't have an option back then but mm-hmm. i thought you know let's i'll i'll start exploring my options then Awesome, awesome. So, uh, so I think I was I was at the borderline. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right, right. I can imagine, you know, and you know, seeing as uh, uh, though you didn't, uh, you know, go to the psychologist or you know to consult and all, but it's very very healthy to go and you know. Definitely, to- uh, I'm not I'm not saying it in a bad way that you know I wanted to consult a psychologist, yeah. but I always felt that 
अगर मैं इसको इफ आई कैन यू नो गेट थ्रू दिस ऑन माय ओन आई थिंक दैट्स दैट्स मच बेटर राइट राइट आई थिंक आई विल बी स्ट्रांगर बाय दैट वे श्योर सो योर डैड आई एम श्योर मस्ट हैव एडवाइज्ड यू वेरी वेल सो विल यू लाइक टू शेयर ही 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 ऑलवेज टेल्स मी वन थिंग यू नो ही ऑलवेज बिलीव्स इन हार्ड वर्क बिकॉज़ he is i think 60 plus now and he still goes to play every day wow. so you can imagine the motivation he has i, I mean I would, he, he's not he's not i would love to know more about that uh, you know about definitely that. you know i i am a big fan of him actually uh, there's always a distance between a father and a son you know but you don't express a lot of things uh, with each other but you feel that respect for Uh, him i mean i feel that respect for him i'm sure he also does he doesn't <laughs> express it but i think somewhere or the other he must be <laughs> sharing that with his friends or somebody but um, he always believes in uh, you know hard work so uh, he he just told me that you know keep keep working even even the time you're in delhi don't just sit at home uh, go 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 do training uh, go out you know go tra- uh, play with your friends it's okay just take it take things easy for a while you know yeah. things are really tough at the moment everybody is going through a lot so don't be hard on yourself hmm. just take it easy and you know i i was he basically he meant to be patient right don't expect quick results in this tough time just 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 stay there keep keep at it mm-hmm. no totally makes sense totally makes sense so your father has been a badminton player has he played like competitively dash matlab like um he he has never i mean played competitively i mean he he plays in the veterans category now he plays the uh, national circuit for the veterans tournaments national tournaments for the veterans oh. uh, but obviously in his in his young days he never he was not a professional badminton player so he never pursued this career professionally but right. uh, it's his passion so he still oh. plays uh, the local tournaments the state championships or the national tournaments if it's happening you know if he'll go to goa for the tournament he'll go to jaipur for a tournament so he doesn't miss those opportunities Sure, sure. So, so, uh, yeah. So, um, okay. Tell me if um, you know. I mean, if you could meet your younger self, not that you are old. Uh, I mean, <laughs> you were starting uh, your career. You know, when you were uh, uh, seven years old or nine years old. So, if you could meet your, uh, if you could meet your younger self, who is striving to be where you are today, what is that one piece of advice that you would like to give to him? so there's i don't think there's one piece of advice which would uh, change my career from this to that but i feel uh i think you know when i moved to hyderabad which was in 2010 that is when things started getting serious for me before that it was like you know you're playing the under 10 under 13 state championships you're winning but it didn't matter much you know because you don't know what's the level you want to compete at and what you are at Sure. so once i moved to hyderabad you know things got serious you know i have I, i saw players from all around the country training at one place eating at one place resting at one place and then you know you have players you know your seniors who who is saina neva who's kashya parupalli who's pranoy hs who are doing so well at the international stage you know so so if if you are seeing your seniors winning olympic medals mm. the bar is way too high for you to compete at irrespective of the tournaments you win you're not there mm-hmm. the level is just too high so i feel there are collective of things you need to focus on um, uh, so i wouldn't agree on if there's a one piece of advice but i would suggest that uh, you know taking care of your body since the beginning would be one okay. being injury free uh, would be a blessing i feel you know for a sports person to be injury free throughout his career or you know as less as injuries could be you know your way would be much better mm. and and that comes with a lot of things you know if you're what kind of food you're eating how much how well you're training uh, how's your recovery on certain things on certain days how much are you pushing is your body allowing you to push that much on that particular day you know so are you are you able to understand what your body is asking for you So I think collective of things matters when it comes to that. So yeah, totally. I understand what you're saying. Okay, will you like to talk about your best game memory? Oh, definitely. I mean, uh, uh, it it was recently uh, when I when I was uh, playing the 
uh, selection trials for the Asian Games. I think it was a big, big thing for me. Uh, it was my first Asian Games, and we had to play a selection trial for that. Uh, I mean, we were doing pretty well uh, before the trials in the international circuit. But obviously, when the stakes were so high, you know, if you ha- you have to play three or four matches in the selection trials, and you have to win three out of four matches to qualify for the spot for the Asian Games. And then me and Sikki lost the first match, uh, and then we ha- we were under a lot of pressure to win the next two or three matches to get that spot back. So I think that that selection trials was a pretty big thing for me. And when we qualified uh, for the for the Asian Games uh, from the selection trials, I was pretty relieved and I was pretty happy. Okay. Uh, even though uh, even though I feel we were not at our best, but pulling through those matches was was really special for me because uh, Asian Games was a big big thing. For any any sports person. <laughs> wow, and and uh, I believe you won some medal in your. Yeah, yeah. So the men's team event won the silver medal, which was historic uh, for the country. Uh, that was the first silver medal for the men's team events, and I was I was gladly a part of it. So uh, uh, that's fantastic. You're talking about uh, Asian Games, mate. Asian Games, Asian Games, just the uh, recently which happened right in China, Hangzhou. So uh, it was it was a very big thing for everybody, and uh, and uh, you know uh, now that I speak about it, I feel so happy. You know that uh, we got through that selection trials, and you know I was part of the squad which won the historic silver medal. So you know I'm still wearing that jersey from the from the <laughs> team. <laughs> that is very special, I'm sure. Absolutely, okay. definitely, because you know as a, as a player, you always. Think of those two, three big events, which is Asian Games, Commonwealth, and Olympics, right? Yes. So I think these three events are like really, really special to any any badminton player. You know, you want to win those medals. World Championships. Also. World Championship. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about. I mean, World Championship happens every year. So you know, right. you you feel that he can. Ah, this year, not this year. This year. These events, you feel that you know, if you miss out now, you have to wait for the next two years or four years yes. for the, for a next big event to happen. Exactly. So I wouldn't say that World Championship is small, but uh-huh. you know, it's not. I wouldn't say it's bigger than Asian Games or Commonwealth or Olympics. Mm, yes, no, I totally get to. So okay, so talking about confidence, like you know, you very rightly said, you know, even during your quali- uh, qualifying, when you you know, kind of you were able to, uh, you know, get through and definitely raised your co- qualify, uh, you know, your confidence a lot, and then uh, it also gave you so much of relief. So uh, any tips or tricks that you would like to share, you know, how to build composure and confidence in your game and generally in life as well. So uh, for me, uh, I feel I feel very confident and I feel very uh, happy if I've had a good training day. So for example, uh, I feel today um, I had a good day. So I am quite motivated. Even I'm at home now. I've rested. I've, I've you know uh, I'm done for the day. But I'm motivated. I'm pumped up to you know do whatever I have to do next. If to speak speak with you uh, or you know have a call with mom after this or you know uh, watch something. I'll, I'm 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 feeling good today. Right. So I feel, uh, I feel uh, having a good training session or a good training week. For example, if you if you don't have tournaments for say six weeks, you have a four to six week of training gap. And you know, if if I'm training well, the first week would be you know a, a tough one for you because you're getting back. Second week will be better. But as you go through three or four weeks of training, you start feeling good. Your body body reacts in a good way. So I feel that that that's the thing which you know makes me feel good and you know builds a A high level of confidence in me. Yeah, yeah, sure. I think that's uh, that's the preparation. I mean, you know, if the definitely perfect, then obviously you uh, one feels uh, good about exactly. It. So I have I have tournaments uh, two weeks from now, okay. uh, and that's how I planned it. So I have four weeks of training, and the first two weeks will be a bit tough for me. So this is the third week of training. So I know that I na- I now have to push a lot for the next two weeks mm. to be at my peak when the tournament hits. So, are you still training with uh, Gopi Gopi Chand sir? Gopi sir, yes, yes. We are training under him. Uh, he's he's traveling currently. He's in Japan for a tournament. Uh, but uh, whenever he's in town, uh, he's making sure that you know he's coming for the sessions and he's training us. Super. Okay. So, what according to you is a winning mindset? Ma'am, I think uh, uh, it comes back to that. I mean, if you're doing hundred percent, if you're giving a hundred percent in training. and if you're feeling good when you're stepping on court in the tournament i think that is the mindset you need i mean of course if if i'm if i'm no if i know that i'm under prepped 
I won't have the confidence to beat the guy who's who's doing pretty well in the circuit. But even if I'm not doing pretty well in the circuit, but I've had a good training spree, I I know that I can beat that guy. Sure. Or I can beat that pair. Mm-hmm. So I think uh I think a lot I think 100% depends on training. Or sometimes if you feel that you know you didn't have a good training period, but the last few days or few weeks of training were nice. I think that also boosts up your confidence and then you feel you know that i'm i'm fine i'm feeling good e- even though the last few weeks were not good but the last few days were fine my mm-hmm. body is fine now and i think i'm i'm fine so i think you need to boost up yourself uh, mentally also yeah to to you know boost up that confidence that you know you, you're doing well sometimes give give that hope you know that you're doing well you can do better you will do better and i think that's that's it that that works for me i feel hmm hmm because uh, yeah besides yeah pre- preparation is definitely important uh, but also i think uh, to have the right mindset and not to get nervous on the you know you may prepare very well but you know if you're not uh, no, if you get nervous and if you kind of can't think straight if you're not able to think straight while the tournament is going on i think that also really affects the game so that's also definitely I- definitely i think uh, I, i think the more number of tournaments or matches you play you overcome that nervousness i feel okay so so if i if i have to speak about that i i was i mean i'm seeing pranoy bhaiya you know uh, since a really really long time and i feel that he has overcome that mentally for himself initial initial 2022 was really tough for him but you know as as he started performing well he he has cracked the code to win those crucial matches now if he was losing those crucial matches one year ago from now i think he has cracked that now to win those matches from 19 all or 16 19 down in the third game sure. so i feel i feel if you if you if you are at that circuit if you're playing the circuit for a really long time and you're almost there i think you will understand how to get that mindset and you know you know overcome that nervousness sure 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 so i feel you know you know you just need to be at that level consistently for a really long time and it will it will come through one or two tournaments you will break through so what's your message to the upcoming young athletes i feel that uh, definitely you need to uh, take good guidance from your coaches and trust the process uh, it's not going to be quick it's a long long journey so i feel that you know you need to just uh, trust the process and keep at it Thank you thank you wonderful message so uh, let's come to the rapid fire questions these are short sure. one line answers okay all right cool cool how do you keep yourself motivated uh give my 100% in training what's the best advice you've ever got trust the process <laughs> uh, that makes sense any other side passion that you follow i wouldn't say it's a passion but i have a i have i have a big love for dogs so i try to be around them to uh, keep happy <laughs> that's great who's your favorite athlete and also what's the biggest learning you take away from his career his or her career uh i feel that all my seniors are my motivation and uh, i have i have a big big respect for them for what they have achieved and i think uh, i just try to follow what they used to do when they were my age and uh, yeah and and yeah i think i think uh one thing which i've learned from all of them combined was that uh they they never stopped working for it they never the, the hunger was always there to win absolutely okay documentary film that inspired you the most i wouldn't i wouldn't call it a documentary but chuck the india whenever i watch it uh, it gives me goosebumps I, i i really get motivated watching that and bhag milka bhag of course yeah yeah these are such shag- these, these few movies which uh, you know you can watch it how many ever times you want and you'll be just pumped up <laughs> <laughs> okay best nutrition advice uh cut meetha <laughs> oh <laughs> <laughs> right sugar sugar is your biggest enemy Sugar is the biggest enemy, actually. Yeah. Best exercise you suggest for mental fitness? For mental fitness. Yeah. Uh, I feel uh, yoga nidra has helped me a lot to calm down and you know uh, relax a bit when I'm when I'm too hyper. 
i think so you know just to uh, take a break and relax from the day uh, if something's not right i think a good 20 minute 15 20 minute yoga nidra session is e- enough to calm you down your favorite quote quote uh, i wouldn't i think it would be the same uh, you know just trust the process and keep at it and uh, you know you will you will get through it one day proudest accomplishment so far asian games medal hmm most embarrassing moment <laughs> ah kafi sare hue hain losing into the first rounds of you know x number of tournaments What? continuously for a long period of time uh, and coming back to the academy to face that disappointment so okay. yeah <laughs> that that was my biggest fear always oh. you know losing a tournament not not doing well and then coming back to the academy and face bopi sir oh god okay okay <laughs> biggest biggest disappointment you know i feel <laughs> okay so let's talk about your biggest dream i i i before asian games i dreamt of asian games uh, to win the medal mm-hmm. and uh, uh, it happened so uh, next uh, and the biggest dream of any player uh, is olympics right. so uh, my my definitely that the goal i want to achieve next would be to qualify for the olympics and give my best and you know try to get a medal awesome awesome and with this we come to the end of the show thank you so much rohan for joining me in this absolutely amazing session thank you thank you so much for having me it was a pleasure and i had a really good time thank you so much thank you all for listening today's episode with your host garbhaftar see you in the next one have a great day bye